Prime Rib is the ultimate family get together, show stopping entree. But people get all up in their head about it and they think it's really hard to do. It's very, very easy. I can picture it now. You're gonna cut into that delicious, juicy, hot prime rib that's perfectly cooked to a medium rare and all of your guests are gonna think you are the cooking master. But you know what? Here's our little secret. It's not that hard. I'm gonna show you how to do it. Let's get to it. Prime rib comes from the rib primal cut of the cow. Go figure. It is basically a ribeye. It goes with other names. It could be a standing rib roast. It can be a whole rib roast. It could be a ribeye roast. They just use a lot of marketing terms when they're trying to sell you stuff in the grocery store. So keep an eye out for all those things. They're all the same thing. The good thing about cooking a whole ribeye is the fact that the ribeye has enough fat so that it can deal with long cooking times. It can deal with low and slow, that the fat will render from the inside out, really making it taste delicious. Prime rib refers to the primal cut that it comes from, not the grade. Grades of meat are prime, choice, select. So you can have a prime prime rib. You can have a choice prime rib. So it does not refer to the grade, it refers to the primal cut in which it comes from. When making our prime rib, the first decision we have to make is bone in or boneless ribeye roast. So there are pros and cons to each one. If you want a bone in ribeye roast, you're gonna get a little added boost from the bones and you're also gonna get a presentation boost for when those bones are popping out and you're slicing it up. That may be where you wanna go. If you go to with a boneless rib roast, I just wanna roast it and go. I wanna tie it up, roast it, slice it, and eat it. You can't go wrong with either one. It's up to you on which one you wanna choose. All right, in this Choose Your Own Adventure, do you guys remember those books, those Choose Your Own Adventure books? Anyway, in this Choose Your Own Adventure, you chose to go with the bone-in ribeye. So I'm gonna show you a couple things about the bone-in ribeye. The way you buy these is per bone. So there's one bone, two bones, three bones in this one. So this is a three bone rib roast. The basic rule of thumb is one bone for two people. So that'll give you kind of an estimate of how much to buy. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and cut some of this fat. They've already, the grocery store has already kind of cut some of this fat down right here. I'm gonna cut it a little further because I wanna see the bones. So we're gonna go all the way down until we hit the bones. Pulling back this piece of meat right here, this piece of fat, until we go ahead and get all the bones so we can see the bones. So we'll save that for another project. You can grind that up. Then what we're gonna do is we cut out the meat in between all these bones. And it'll just make, for when it cooks, it's just gonna make that, um, the bone pop a little bit more. So go on either side of the bone, curve your knife, just cutting the in-between out of it. Again, all this little rib meat is gonna be good for ground beef and stuff like that. And you can clean this up as much as you want. So if you need to get a smaller knife or something out and we can really clean some of this up. But you'll see when the, the finished product comes out that those bones will have separated, the meat will have shrunk and they'll make those bones really pop. Like I said before, we're doing this for mainly presentations. So here we go, there are the bones. So those have been French. So this is called Frenching the bone. So here we go. When you're dealing with the bone and rye roast, what you'll find the most often that butchers do or grocery stores do is they will cut the bones off and then tie them back on. Now, I know that's kind of weird. Like, why would they do that? It's basically to make so you can cook this roast with the bones on. And when you're ready to carve, you can just cut the little twine and the bones will fall off and that'll make it easier to carve at the end. So I just wanted to show you that a lot of times the butcher shops or grocery stores will do that already, but I wanna show you how to do it just in case they don't or just, just to teach you how it is, how it works. So the only thing you're gonna do is you're just gonna start cutting right down the bone. So you start on this side of the bone, it goes all the way down. You wanna cut into the meat, so you wanna go close to the bone as possible and they're just gonna come right off. Just take it, especially if it's your first time, just take it slow. Use your nice big knife from the Butcher Wizard Collection. Coming soon, go ahead and hit the link in the description for the waiting list or to purchase it. Then we're just following those bones all the way down. Spread it out a little bit. So here is our 
ribeye roast, and then here are our bones. We'll go ahead and tie those back on just like they do at the butcher shop. At the butcher shop, if they ask you if you want the bones cut and tied on, that is what that means. At this point too, I don't really want to trim a lot of this fat off. If it's really thick, I will. But what I like to do is to score the top of the fat. That's going to help it render and get crispy and crunchy on the outside. And that's really all we want, right? We don't want to cut off all the fat, but we do want to crisp it up. Do a nice cross hack. That'll look pretty. You want to do it before you tie it up because obviously it will not be able to do it once it's tied up. Here is our nice cross hatch scores so that we can get it all tied up. So now we're going to tie the bones back on. We're just going to tie the whole rib roast up. Take your twine. I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to do this. You take two fingers and you wrap it around twice. And then you come back and grab the other loose side and then make your knot. Cut it up. Cut that twine in there and compact everything nice and tight so that it cooks evenly. So our boning rib roast, the ribs have been removed and tied back on just like they would do at a butcher shop. Let's go to the boneless roast. I'm going to show you how to tie that one up. All right, so here's our boneless ribeye roast. So what we're going to do is there is a little tail kind of on here. It's just not very good. We're just going to clean it up a little bit. It goes down like that. We want this to be super compact and as round as possible. We're gonna go ahead and do the same technique where we score the fat on top so that it'll get nice and crispy when we go ahead and do our final sear and cook. So we're just gonna do, again, you're just taking a little bit, like an eighth of an inch deep. We're not going super deep here. We're just trying to cut through that fat just a little bit. And what that's gonna do is just, again, make it almost like cracklings on top. Here's our cross hatch. It's gonna make it look nice. To tie this one up, I'm gonna show you a little different technique. All I have here are just long pieces of twine, and we're just going to go ahead and just do a simple double knot here, double overhand knot, and making sure that we really cinch it up so that it stays nice and tight. And we got a tied up prime rib. Now we season. I always use Worcestershire sauce as my binder for prime ribs. Now, I love Worcestershire sauce, Worcestershire sauce, I have no idea. So we're gonna rub this thing down with our Worcestershire sauce, all sides. We're also gonna hit it with Montreal steak seasoning and kosher salt. I love this seasoning. It's already done for you. It has the garlic and the pepper and the salt. It doesn't have enough salt in my opinion, but. You know, I always add a little bit extra, but hey, we well, you know, you do, you do you, man. You do you. If you wanted to chop up some fresh herbs like rosemary or thyme or something like that, you could, you put it on this stage. Sometimes I don't like to put the fresh herbs on there because in that second process where we're gonna sear it up, it really kind of tends to burn on me. So again, like I said, you do you what you wanna do. The good thing about seasoning this thing is you, don't, you cannot hardly over season it. If you cover this thing in salt crust, it probably would not over season it. It's a big cut of meat. And when you go to eat it, you're just gonna get a slice. So I'm only getting this little bit that has the seasoning on it. So over season, okay? I'm gonna hit it with a little extra kosher salt, give it a nice crust. I know I'm cross contaminating all my salt, but whatever. You know, that's how that's what I do for you people. I do everything. I give it all. All right, boom. I have successfully spread out salt and seasoning all over my kitchen. So that means you know that you're cooking something good. Let's get these roasts in the oven, 300 degrees. We're going low to start out with, and then we're gonna sear at the end. So, all right, so do you remember when I said this is gonna be super easy? So far, all I've done, we tied it up, we seasoned it, we're ready to cook. I wanna thank Meter for sponsoring this video. What Meter is, is a wireless probe thermometer that goes into the meat that you're gonna cook. It's very, very simple. You take the probe, Okay, you put it in the center of the meat. So we wanna go through the side here. We're gonna put it through the center, just so it gets in the middle. And then it sets up a cook for us. There's an app that you go to and you go ahead and it's super easy. You click on, I'm gonna do a prime rib roast and you put it in the oven. The app tells you what to do. It tells you how long it's gonna to take to finish cooking. All you have to do is put in what temperature you want your ending prime rib roast to be. Now here is a hack. What we're gonna do is we're going to put this low and slow in a low 300 degree oven. Then we're gonna kick up the temperature to 500 degrees to crisp up the outside, to caramelize the outside. 
I will tell the meter that I want it to cook to the doneness when it's one degree less than what I want to actually finish at. Okay, so that way I can crank up the heat and crisp up the outside. The great thing about this right here is the meter block. So the meter block has four temperature probes. So say you're gonna make steaks for people and they want all different temperatures, you can put one in each steak and be good to go. Or you can be crazy like me and make two prime ribs in two different ways. And you need to look at the two different temperatures as they cook. Meter is giving my viewers a 10% off coupon code in the description. So click that link or there's a QR code. If you're watching it on TV, go ahead and snap a picture of this QR code and it'll take you to where you need to go. Go check it out. I love this product. It is making my prime rib roasting so much easier. Thank you, Meter. If you're watching this video on the day it comes out on December 15th, First of all, thank you, you're a true fan. To guarantee Christmas delivery, you're gonna have to order by the 18th. So it doesn't give you a lot of time. But again, this is a great gift. Maybe you forgot somebody on your list. This is a quick gift, but December 18th is the deadline. So act fast. So the boneless one is done a little bit before the other one. So we're gonna pull that one out and then wait for the bone in one to come to temperature. It looks good already. So now we got both gross. Ready to go. They look really good, already caramelized, but I'm just gonna go ahead and jack up the heat a little bit and we'll put them in there for a little bit just to bring them, just to get that crispy crust on the outside. So let's recap. Tied them up, put them in the oven. 300, it took about two to two and a half hours or so until the, the meter reading came out to the on the rare setting and told us to pull it. And then we pulled them both the bone in took a little longer to cook than the bone less, of course, so we pulled it out accordingly. I then jacked the heat up to 500, put them back in the oven to crisp uh, the fat cap on the outside. This smells amazing, but I'm going to hold off and not eat these right now because I am going to wait and let them rest. We'll give them about 20 minutes or so. We're going to cut, cover them with a little bit of aluminum foil. I roasted the bone in on a bed of onions, so I'm going to go ahead and make a quick jus. All I did was take all the stuff that was in the pan left over, and then added some prepared beef broth to it, a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. I'm gonna season up at the end. It's gonna be a great au jus to put over the top. It's gonna to be great, I can't wait. Now the hardest part, we have to wait. And it smells amazing in here, so I cannot wait. All right, all right, I'll wait, I'm gonna wait. We're gonna, I'm not gonna eat you yet. I'm gonna eat you soon though. You're gonna be eating soon. <laughs> Let's go. How, how long has it been? Anyone keeping time? How long has it been? Oh, it's just been five minutes. I, I'm waiting 15 more minutes for you guys. Here we go, we unveil. All right, so we can take out our meter probes. Now, first thing, let's go through the bone-in ribeye roast here prime rib. So all you have to do is, since we went and cut this off and tied it back on, we're just going to be able to cut those couple of, couple of twines and then your rib bones just fall right off. Okay, here we go. All right, so we have our rib bones. You can gnaw on these things. The thing is like, uh, rib, the meat in the meat in the meat in the meat in between, the meat in between the ribs is gonna be pretty tough. So I don't know, you might just, you're gonna to have to figure that one out. So let's go ahead and cut straight down the center of this one, the bone in prime rib. I'm nervous every time that I do one of these because you don't know how it's gonna turn out. But man, we do, look at that. Beautiful, medium, medium rare. It's just like edge to edge. I mean, this is a really good piece right here. I'm really excited. I mean, the crust, I don't know if you all can see this, but the crust on the top, the fat, because we scored the fat, is just crispy and crunchy. Let's get a big old slice right down the middle. Whew, throw that on our plate. Now, if you if you have someone who wants a more um, done piece, give them the end cut. You know, it's a little bit more done on the end, so give them the little end cuts. That's another project that we can sous vide one to get a end cut that also is delicious and has all the seasonings and stuff on it, so delicious. Next, we're gonna switch out our boneless ribeye to see what that looks like. All right, so here we go. So here's our boneless ribeye roast, prime rib. So we'll go ahead and take those 
pieces of twine off. Again, that scoring from the fat cap has done a remarkable job as well. Let's go right in the middle. Look at that. Look at how juicy that is and how, oh man, ooh, this is so good. Does not get much better than this. So let's give this one a little try here. Here we go, we got a little bit of jus. We're just gonna go around the camera. This is gonna be messy, but you're not gonna do this obviously when you have people coming over, but hey, I'm gonna do it here. That is so, 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 so good. Oh my goodness. I don't make prime rib near enough. Every time I make prime rib, I need to go, I need to make this more often. The flavor is so good. So tender, so juicy. Man, this has turned out better than I ever would have hoped. Thanks to Meter for helping us out with making sure that everything is cooked perfectly. For your holiday get together, for your family get together, I don't know what's better than this. So good luck if you can find something better. Go ahead and check out the next video. We'll see you on the next one. Glory, what? Now my dog Glory wants to bust in. I don't know what to tell. So good.